Now I'm just eyeballing this, but I will check the strength after it's all uh, in there. So, chucking a bit in here, chucking a bit of water in after it, and then waiting for it all to trickle down. So judging by how it's going in there, I think that's nearly full, so I'll stick a bit in the rad as well. I can hear it gurgling now. Basically, just fill a rad until it starts coming out that top out of it, and you can jam the top hose back over it. There we go. That's actually coming out of there as well. So there must be an air bowl somewhere. Yep, I just see it gurgling all the air bubbles coming at the top. You can tell if there's an air bubble in it because obviously columns of water um, are the same level. So if you have a pipe and loads of kinks in it, the start, if you look down the one end of the pipe and look down the other, they'll both be the same height. But if there's an air bubble somewhere, obviously air is lighter than water. So that lot in the radiator is pushing down on here, it wants to pop it out of here. So there must be an air level some way up because obviously it's not the same column of water pressure. Some more bubbles coming out. Now it's coming out the rad, we can smash that over there. It means it's pretty much full. Right, so both of those are done up. It's now a sealed system, so just we'll just burp it basically. I can see the water's up to the bottom of this neck, so we'll just keep on burping these hoses. And the bottom hose, getting a few air bubbles out of it. And then heat the hoses. All you're trying to do basically is just dislodge air pockets. So give it all a bit of, you know, a little squeeze. I've taken an expansion bottle, I've put that on the floor. I'll just put the tools on the floor. And then we'll start her up and get it going. So if I put this on here, hopefully it won't fall off. Yeah. 
know, I mean it's obviously not pressurised at the moment, but... Put the rad cap on, I'll leave it to get a little bit warmer and then I'll show you the bleeding of this bit here. Right, so bleeding this thing, I've run it up a little bit and now if you take the cap off, you'll see it could do with a little bit more coolant. So, we just give it a little bit, whoa! You see, it's just taking a bit. Give her a little burp. Right, that seems pretty good. So, you want to take the radiator cap off, because obviously if that's a sealed system and you pull that out, the water's not going to want to travel out very well. So if you take the radiator cap off, that's obviously that pushing down that's going to come out there a lot better. So there's a little tab on here, push that down and pull up. And I think it's a 10 mil, might be an 11. I'll go grab a socket and we'll do that. Right, so it's a 12 mil. And if I just sit the little tripod on here, I'll show you what's going on. Reverse. Pull this out. And as soon as you take it out, the water should want to bubble out of there. Can you hear the air? Did you hear that little shh? Can you hear it again? So the air's coming out of there. Well, now we've just got water. Let a little bit of water out. So we know that, you know, that's the high point. So hopefully all the air in that head is at the front and it's just come out of here. Oh, I have actually sectioned one of these heads and cut it all apart. And I'll try and find the photos, I might stick a few in here if you're interested. So do this back up, you don't have to go nuts on it, just like what I'd call fist tight. Because obviously it's tapered thread and if you go tightening it more and more and more you're just going to bust something. So pop that little uh, spade terminal back on that and then you can fill the radiator again. So let's chuck some coolant in there. You see, I let a little bit of coolant out. So we'll start it up again and give it a couple more squeezes and put the cap on. Should be done. Obviously, got to put the expansion bottle thingy bobby back on. It's not really an expansion bottle, is it? It's a puke tank. So let's not get mixed up. We'll leave that heating up again. So just to show you here, if I wipe this clean, you can see the water being pushed out drop by drop. That's because the water's getting hot and the water's expanding. 
and this is uh, letting the pressure out so this will keep the pressure at about 16 psi and it puts the bit that it pukes out in here when the water expands and then once it cools down there's another little clever valve in here that opens under vacuum and when the water contracts again instead of pulling air back in it pulls the hose in the bottom of there and pulls coolant back in so this sort of self bleeds you know as long as it's somewhere close so we're just checking the gravity of the coolant and if I just hold it up level as a sight you can see that's good for minus 18 which is plenty enough for you know UK so Put that back in there. Spill some of it all over the rad, why not? And then pop the rad cap back on. Now the rad cap has a spring here and that kind of sits on that. So if you imagine in the radiator, that sits on it. When the pressure gets above 16 psi, that lifts off and lets the water out of this side hole in the you know the puke tank basically puts it out there and uh, once it's cooled down obviously this is stuck shut the coolant contracts because it's cooling down and it draws a vacuum and now this little guy that opens under vacuum and allows the coolant to get sucked back in from the puke tank So we obviously took it for a drive last night and we'd done like part one of the bleed and so today we're going to check the level and pull this out again. So it's still at the top which is good which means whatever it needed it must have taken out the tank which was here and is now here so it's taken know, maybe a couple hundred mils out of there. So all I should do is whack that out again and I'll put you guys here so you can see just thread the tripod over there and give it a go so crack that off take your radiator cap off And then go out of the way. You might hear some air coming out, you might see some bubbles. Looks like we just got water. Can you see that? So we're alright, we've bled up properly. So spin that round. I'm happy with that, obviously there's uh, no air on that because there's just water coming out the side of there. Snug it back up, remember just sort of fist tight, you've not got to go crazy on it. And then obviously just check the level in here, so fill that up and then Rad cap back on, and then we'll chuck a bit more in there to get that up to the full line just so we know where it is. Obviously, so that pretty much concludes the bleeding. So, just to recap, once you've put it all back together, put the bottom hose on the rad, take the top hose off, and fill it up by this until it starts, you know, gurgling, and it will slowly seep down and fill it up till it's full in here. Then fill the rad till it comes out of here and you know both sides are full. Pop that back on, top it up by the top of the rad and then run it up for a bit while squeezing and burping the hoses and with the cap off just see if you can get any bubbles out that way. And then put the cap on, either let it cool down or take it for a little drive. Like don't go nuts on it obviously because if it's got an air pocket or something you'll have trouble. But just basically get it hot and then once it cools down again it will suck whatever it needs out the puke tank and then you can go ahead and do the temperature thing again and check if there's air bubbles in top of the head and that's it basically